Hi Crafters, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to dry emboss with a new stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. So this is the new polka dot ball. It's a 6x6 and it's part of the February 2023 release at A Colorful Life Designs. Now you can see here I have my die cutting machine. I have a Spellbinders Platinum 6, a piece of pink kind of heavyweight cardstock. I'm going to start with my metal shim, the rubber mat, and then the blue embossing plate. Now the rubber mat and the blue embossing plate did come with my die cutting machine, but check whatever sandwich works for your particular unit. Now here's a photo of the finished card. Um, you can see there's a very subtle embossing. It's not gonna raise it as much as it would if it were in an embossing folder or a 3D embossing folder, but this is yet just another fun way to really stretch your supplies and use them in new ways. So there's so many different ways you can use stencils and there's such a reasonable price point that I like to show you all the different ways that I like to play with mine. So here I have some low-tech mint tape from scrapbook.com. I'm just taping the back of it and I'm gonna set up my sandwich here. So I have the base plate and again the metal shim which is very warped, <laughs> my rubber mat, and then I'm gonna put down the paper in this stencil and then I will put the embossing plate on top. And I do run this through a couple times. You will find there's quite a bit of pressure, so you gotta, you know, work at it a little bit to get it through, but it's not so much that it's going to break your machine. But again, check whatever sandwich works for this technique for your specific um, embossing machine. But this is what works for my Spellbinders Platinum 6. So I'm just going to take it out and I'm not actually going to remove um, the tape yet. I'm going to leave this stencil on there because I want to do some additional ink blending. Um, because this is kind of 3D looking, even more so with the little bit of the raised portion, I decided I want to grab some distress ink. So I'm going to use um, hickory smoke and then I do end up getting my black soot because hickory smoke wasn't quite dark enough. But I have this little mini, it's called a Bitty Bunny Blending Brush. It's the mini version of the blending brushes that I use from the Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm just going to um, do some ink blending on the right side of all of these dots. So what I want to do is make the dots seem even more 3D by giving them some dimension on one side. So I'm just going to work through and you can see here it doesn't show very much and I wasn't finding it to be dark enough either. So that's why I ended up grabbing the black soot. But I'm just staying to the right of all of the circles and it's not taking too long and then this is the benefit of having one of these little small brushes is I can kind of really control where I'm going to lay down the ink. So here I'm deciding eh, it wasn't dark enough so I grabbed the black soot. And I'm using this little paw mat from Simon Says Stamp just to kind of hold the whole shebang down for me. Now I am working on my new glass mat. You may have seen me talk about this or noticed that I made the switch from a black glass mat. But this is um, the aqua colored magnetic glass mat from Glassboard Studios. And this is a small company in the U.S. that I ordered this from. And I do have a coupon, Amy's Wears 20. So if you shop there, you can get 20% off the entire website with that coupon code. So um, I'm very, very happy with this. Um, it holds down my stencil even with a card base, which is a lot thicker. These are really super strong magnets that I also got from that shop and they managed to um, magnetize it underneath the glass. So that's what enables me to kind of hold down the whole shebang while I work um, on the entire surface of my new glass mat. So now I'm just going to remove the stencil and this mint tape carefully as to not tear. And you can see the dimension um, when I flip it over, but now you can see the dimension as well from the ink blending. Now I do want to do a highlight on the other side. So I'm creating the light source to the left of all of these little dots and then the shadowing with the ink on the right. So this is a, I think it's a size 10, it may be a size 8 um, jelly roll white gel pen and I'm just doing these little lines and this didn't take very long at all. It may seem cumbersome but it really went quickly. So just going to the left of all of these little dots um, just to add some more dimension and interest to this cool design. So this would be really fun. Um, 
a really fun stencil to kind of kick off the side of your composition if you're doing ink blending in any particular color um, but it's just such a cool illusion that it gives and now I want to round it even further so I'm just taking my black blending brush and just doing some very light ink blending again just to the right of this ball because I really want it to kind of pop off um, even further and seem round um, to the eye on this panel of paper. So again, I'm just doing very light handed just from the right side and then kind of getting lighter handed as I move towards the center just to really accent that round shape. And again, <laughs> gray wasn't cutting it so I brought back in the black soot. I'm just kind of tapping it off because I want this to be really subtle. I don't want it to be too much. So again, just starting from the right, moving towards the center and you know, creating that, that faux dimension on this panel. Now this is just a, a cheap colored cardstock. I think I got from a big box store. It does have a white core. Um, it's 110 pound, but you know, it's the inexpensive kind. And I did uh, frame it with um, a black border just to kind of tie things together. And I attached it to a card base that's A2 size. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And that is 110 pound cardstock. So here I'm just shopping my sentiment book to see how I want to finish this. I'm considering hello. As you saw, I ended up turning it into a thank you card, but this is my storage solution for my die cuts. So I have a bunch ready and I really like the round thank you shape. It felt like it tied in with the design. Now, sadly, I do think that thank you is probably just continued, but use whatever you have in your stash to go with your design. And I am going to use some micro dots here, which is an adhesive, um, sheet and what it does is it puts a bunch of little dots on the back so I'm just putting it in a couple different places um, you just keep reusing these same sheets over and over again you just find the spot that has the glue still on it and what it does is it eliminates the need to use liquid glue which I tend to get pretty frustrated with so I'm just gonna put that down in the center towards the top and then really burnish it down um, to help the glue adhere to that raised surface and then I'm going to add this little bit of card bling that I also got from a colorful life designs little freebies that come with your order and I'm going to lay down five little dots of liquid glue and attach these cool little blingage they're black with white polka dots so I felt like that went with the whole polka dot theme so Overall, very simple in design, came together quickly, not complicated. If you have a die cutting machine in these sort of mats, you can definitely do this technique as well. And it's a really fun way to stretch your supplies and get more out of your stencils. So be sure to check out the rest of this February release. There are so many cool geometric stencils to choose from. So thank you so much for spending time with me today and I will catch you next time. Bye.